Hello. <clears throat> so years ago, uh, pretty much right after I saw the film in the theater, uh, you know, I saw The Disaster Artist and talked about it already. Um, of course, I talked about the book a bit and, uh, well, <laughs> I talked about the book to some extent where, uh, you know, the film is, you know, based on this and how I really enjoyed the book <clears throat> and the audiobook in particular. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that the first time in 2017. Right, of course, I uh, mentioned that last time. Um, now, the book, you know, is more from Greg's perspective, and he does talk about Tommy as well as himself. And they're you know, how he, his dreams and then his interactions with Tommy, as well as some background about Tommy himself. Um, the, the film stars uh, Dave Franco as Greg Sestero, James Franco as <clears throat> Tommy Wiseau, um, uh, Seth Rogen is in the film as uh, the cinematographer Sandy and the uh, yeah, there, there's so many uh, uh, cool people We're on the back here. Uh, Allison Bree, Barry Greener, uh, Josh Hutcherson uh, as a guy who plays Denny, uh, uh, <clears throat> Jackie Weaver as an actress playing uh, uh, Claudette. And uh, Zach Efron as Chris R., the actor who plays Chris R. Um, Franco directed the film, and he produced it, and Seth Rogen produced the film also. Um, Tommy Wiseau has a cameo and a post credit scene, and in the credits he's credited as Henry. Um, I read how uh, there was like a casting director that Greg Sestero played, but he his scene got cut and it's not in the blu-ray extras unfortunately so that's a disappointment <clears throat> and that but you know the film itself for what it is it's actually a pretty good film uh, but if you were to look at it as like an adaptation many people say it isn't a very good one because you know a lot of what happens in the, the you know the book isn't exactly presented in the film. And, um, you know, if you know what the first, uh, you know, the, uh, Tommy called the this book the Red Bible because you know, it was red, had like a film reel with like a, a part of it like being like a fuse, like on top, and then it's going down to, you know, explode. And, uh, You know, this book, it really paints Tommy in a very, you know, it's very honest from Greg's perspective from how when he first met him and to the various you know, ups and downs they've had together. Um, and some of the problems that happened when making The Room. Um, the film does definitely uh, uh, show some of this, but not as much as... Uh, what we, what you read or hear about in the book, um, and of course when I say here, you know the audiobook. I think it's one of those times where people are like, oh, the book is so much better. Well, you know what? Maybe uh, the audio book is so much better because not only do you have the guy himself who wrote it uh, narrating the book, but he also has a very good Tommy Lloyd soul impression. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, I think that's very enjoyable. And, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, he really, uh, shows, uh, uh the, the book really shows how, uh, how he, uh, It's a very cool and honest portrayal of of, uh, uh, of Greg's perspective in the 
about Tommy. You know, it is not shy, of course, as I mentioned, the shows of the darker stuff, but it is, it's told in a way where it's still very sympathetic and very positive. You know, it, it shows the various positives of Tommy as well as the negatives. There are some negatives in the film. Um, and, and, you know, I know I'm being kind of coy about uh, talking about this because I have talked about the, this obviously years ago. So this is sort of like my revisiting of it in a way. So in that sense, it's like, you know, enough time has gone on and I'm rewatched it again. And still, it's still a very good film. Um, yeah, it might not be the greatest adaptation though, but sometimes it's, it's, it isn't that common to have an adaptation so bang on correct about the book, be it a true story or a fictional uh, uh, book. Um, um, and having read the book, listened to the book, and watched the film, I do wish there were some more scenes where, uh, you know, we saw more, some of the uh, uh, more inner workings of Greg, you know, for instance, you know, in the film, it's like, yeah, you know, Greg's just all gung-ho and will play Mark in the room. When and the reality was he didn't really want to be in it. Like, he'd help out behind the scenes, but he wasn't going to be in the film. That was a, you know, a thing with him. He, that, and it took a while for him to finally say yes. You know, Tommy offered him a good amount of money as well as a new car. And so... uh and then there's this awkward thing where uh, I have to get rid of uh, the guy who was already playing Mark as well as, uh, you know, uh, have it where um, Greg is filming scenes as well as that guy <clears throat> who's originally cast as Mark. And then, of course, they're never going to intend to use that guy's footage, but it's like... It's, it's it's one of those things like something like that for instance it would have been cool to see such a uh, scenario where Greg you know he's you know he didn't really think too much of the room upon uh, reading it like you know uh, just Tommy went away for some time and he came back and he had the room script originally it was a play then he's a as a, uh, <clears throat> uh, I think a book, and then a movie. So, you know, he uh, he, he had it uh, eventually, and Greg wasn't really. You know, he's like, I knew what this movie would be, and at the same time, he's like, I wanted to see what Tommy would do to make it, and then he just wanted to help out, but not act, but he was course convinced but something like that i think that would have been really cool to have seen in the film you know some sort of conflict between the two of them to the extent where tommy wants him in the movie greg doesn't really want to be in the movie and then greg finally gives in uh, once uh, tommy offers him a good amount of uh, money as well as a new car so uh, something like that I think would, would have really been cool to have seen in the film. Uh, Tommy says, I approve of the book 44%. Or 40%. I don't know why I said 44. But he approves of the book 40%. And Greg says he believes that's partially because, you know, um, you know, he, he, the room is so great to Tommy that he doesn't really want too much behind the scenes stuff of that as well as his own personal life really exposed and there's a certain amount that Greg does to dig <clears throat> to try and find some stuff about Tommy like where he is from and um some background about that um you know because Tommy's very private he doesn't really want to what people don't know too much about him other than what 
he presents to you, you know, um, that's, that should be enough really. And, um, and Greg kind of understands like, you know, I, I, I can see, you know, why he would feel that way and that's, you know, fine. But he approves of the movie 99.9% because .9 for the most part it is pretty, you know, faithful to Tommy's eyes and that, you know, portrays him in a pretty positive light. You know, it does show some negative aspects, but it doesn't, but it's not like the book where there's a good balance where, where it might show some unpleasantness on Tommy's behalf. But then, of course, it's balanced by overall being a very positive light on him. You know, he's a very complex man. Very interesting. And he's interesting in the film, too. And Franco's performance is excellent. And I know I've talked about this, but I think he should have gotten an Academy Award nomination. Probably would not have won, but he should have been nominated all the same. Um, but, you know, he got, a, you know, those allegations around that time, which is said to have been a factor. And I think there is a good amount of, uh, uh, that does, I think better, there is some truth to that. Um, and it's interesting how, like, somebody on Twitter said something about James Franco and then recanted their or then deleted their tweet and then told people to leave them alone. That, that was weird. But it seems like other women, you know, they came forward and seemed to be more uh, 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 upfront about that. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you're uh, judging the performance and the film itself. You know, the performance should be, you know, it's judged as a good if so it should be acknowledged one's personal uh life shouldn't completely affect the decision of uh excuse me um you know one's personal life should not affect whether or not um uh <clears throat> one gets nominated for an award or not um I think he deserved to be nominated. Um, the film also got nominated for Adapted Screenplay. Um, and the writing is quite good in the film. Um, so on that end, I don't really disagree. Um, would have been interesting if makeup was involved. Uh, you know, makeup and prosthetics for James Franco. Um, but yeah, this is a... <clears throat> Uh, pretty good film. May not be a very good adaptation. Many in a lot of <laughs> films, people say the book is better or <clears throat> or something of the sort. So in that sense, you know, that might be the case. But uh, for what the film is on its own, it's still a pretty good film, I think. Um, it's been a while since I've watched it too, so it's kind of nice to finally, you know... <laughs> Yeah, watch the room and watch this. Also, remembering the memories of uh, listening to the book and the audio book and reading this book. Um, a lot of that stuff, you know, it's just burnt into your mind once you've read it and listened to the audio. It's just like it's amazing. Uh, I'll just say that uh, it's a great, great book if you. I, th I think it's a good read, a great uh, read about the making of uh, films. Um, very interesting insight, you know, Disaster Artist. My Life Inside the Room, the greatest bad movie ever made by Greg Sestero and Tom Bessel. With a, this one is a new introduction by James Franco. It's also interesting how um in the... <clears throat> And the film and, and this book, you know, Tommy and Greg both, you know, like James Dean. And uh, James Franco played James Dean in a TV movie and won a Golden Globe. And then he won a Golden Globe for playing Tommy in this film for Best Actor in a Comedy. Um, so, uh, yeah. This is a pretty... Uh, uh, 
good film. Um, the awards it got nominated for and won, I think, are pretty good and fair, I think. Um, would have been cool if Franco got nominated for an Oscar, but, you know, in the midst of everything going on at that time. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, because of those allegations, which seems to, uh, uh, at least some of them have some sort of credence, whether all of them do or not is, you know, who knows. Um, yeah, Cause sometimes, uh, could be like, you know, he was very rude to me or something. He was just, you know, you know, uh, other things. And so when other women are saying things of the sort about James Franco and some of the behavioral problems he has uh, demonstrated in the past, um, some will just uh, come out and say how he was unpleasant to them. Um, uh, yeah, uh, whether they're all 100% accurate, because, you know, it's one of those things like you, you, you need to be careful with things like that. On one hand, uh, allegations of like, that could be it, like sexual assault, harassment, or verbal abuse is very serious, and you gotta make sure and listen and hear, uh, what is said and make sure if, if and, or, and just think and listen and see how, completely accurate uh, all that is you know no doubt some uh, a good portion are accurate but then there could be those who it could have been there might be exaggerating to some extent because i don't know maybe some want attention or um in their mind it might have been way worse than it could have actually have been in reality like he i don't know it's interesting how people's perception of things are different depending on who you ask. Sort of like this film in the book. It's kind of different depending on the perspective. Uh, you know, there's Greg's and there's like Tommy's, which seems to be more represented in the book or in the film because he approves of that. And the and the point one percent that he does not agree with is how like he uh, throws the football. You know, James Franco throws the football. Uh, it was a throw like me. Uh, I tell you that. <laughs> I was doing more. That was mostly like a James Franco's for, uh, impression. And again, of course, I saw that that too long ago for recording this. But yeah, uh, very good film. Might not be that great of an adaptation, but you know, hey. So anyway. Um, that's my thoughts all these years later. Still enjoy this film. Uh, what do you think about this film? You like it? Do you dislike it? Why or why not? Do you think he, uh, James Franco, deserved an Academy Award nomination regardless of his al the allegations um, <clears throat> uh, uh, brought about around the time he won his Golden Globe? Uh, do you think that should play a factor or no? Um, let me know what you think about this movie. Uh, hope you're all doing well. We're all having a great day. And I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye.